Uh, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Scandi Sports Podcast. I am very, 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 very excited for the next guest. Uh, I worked really hard trying to get him here. It might have been close to a year in progress at this point. Not true. I think the moment I met you, I wanted to Not true. interview you. You have a really cool story, but he's always been deflecting. He doesn't want to do the podcast. He's going to ask some stupid questions or whatever, which is like, it's not my style. I mean, that's not true. I've always wanted to come on, but I just, I just never got I literally life. had to, just I was very life. close to physically dragging you into the room today. I think I have. I've had least, so many random doctor's appointments and random meetings I had to go to instead of the podcast and last week. Sometimes you just, you're just sick. Yeah, you're just sick. You're just sick. <laughs> oh, well, keeping up with the, the spirit of the podcast, um, it's just tradition. Uh, the first question I always ask the guest is like, of your graduating class, who are you going to miss the most? If you had to rank the players on Kings Christian, one through ten. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've never been asked that. Okay, well, there is your answer. You yeah, know you I'm never gonna answer that. No, but let's true. start with Kings Christian and uh, the fact that I might be cursed. Yeah, you actually might be. We lost two games in Canada. Hold on, what what was your record overall uh, in Canada? It was it was seventeen and all in the regular season in the OSBA. Right. And then played I don't know maybe ten more games. Yeah in Canada and we lost two games and which, I've been to two games of Kings Christian yes you might be the curse and your record obviously 0 and 2 I don't know do you guys like get nervous when I'm there or something yeah maybe when, when, I, just, when, I, when I look at you with the camera yeah maybe you just, get just knowing that camera. these highlights are going to be seen by tens of people <laughs> <laughs> tens of twenties <laughs> tens of twenties on a good day we might hit triple digits yeah no but for on a real note talk about um I want to start with the girls team because they had a really great season. Right. Uh, obviously, stopped short of what I guess would be the ultimate goal was OSBA, right. uh, which happened yesterday. Um, but five D1 commits, six? So we have seven Division One kids that are graduating this year, mm -hmm. and then one kid is going to Canadian school. Um, obviously, they got, came up short yesterday, but one game really doesn't define who they are, yeah. right? Um, they've accomplished every goal that they wanted to accomplish and it was a successful successful season we were clearly the best team in Canada um, and I still I believe that if we play that team 100 times we beat them 90 times yeah but some that's just that's beauty of the playoffs well, too right if you played them 100 times without me being there you would win uh, 90 times but yes. like if I was there it might have been 50 90 times, times. Yeah, yeah. 90 times <laughs> No, but um, what was the dynamic of that team? It seems like everybody got along really well. I went to the commitment day. Right. Um, I mean, it was, it was definitely the best team that we've had at that at that school, right? We've had a lot of... In the past, we've had a lot of issues with players and attitude, whatever, but this, this team was, was a dream to coach. A dream to coach. And I think, I think what people don't talk enough about is their sacrifice, mm -hmm. right? Like... They talk, talk about Kings, Kings coaching and training, excellent and all that stuff, but they never talk about how much sacrifice they have had to make, right? Um, for example, Ella, she's going to Bournemouth next year. She she commuted from Guelph every day. Jeez. Every day. Damn. Um, Laura, she's going to Colgate. She moved from Niagara to Oakville. Like her, she moved from where? Niagara to Niagara. Oakville. Dom Ennis, like, you know, Dom, Dominique is, is, um, is known in this community. She could have gone to any prep school, but she decided to come to King's and stick with it. And she had to commute from Orangeville, Fort Erie, like, you know, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a lot of sacrifice from, from them and the parents, too, that supported us, right? So I think, I think the biggest thing about their success is that um, they were able to believe in the process mm -hmm. and stick with it. Right. I mean, they. I'm sure they've had times where they wanted to leave because we're too tough on them. It's it's grueling schedule and all that, but they stuck with it, and look where they're at. So you said uh, there's eight players going one in Canada, seven to the states. Mm -hmm. So that's at least eight players that won't be back next year. Right. Um, do you foresee challenges in building a new roster for next season? I can. Um. No, because. I think the 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 programs that we built over the last three four years, I think what we got we got really popular, right? Because mm -hmm. 
because of the success we had and like you said uh, we're sending a kids to colleges right right so a lot of kids want to come now yeah uh, a lot of kids want to come and we, we usually like to build from a young age yeah. we don't we don't really like to bring in girls that are grade 12 and grade 13s we we try to bring them in when they're grade 9 and grade mm -hmm. 10 so we can develop them so this core was together for a long time then for since they were grade 10 okay so they've been together for three four years oh, okay. right um and then next year we're just gonna hit the reset button three four years but then you had a the pandemic in between so right like, right right the, so it was just like the f first full season first full season when they're actually older yeah so we went to the before the pandemics we, mm -hmm. we went to the semifinals. they're all great tens yeah like dominique <laughs> and lara right. ella everyone was great ten. right so obviously we couldn't compete at that level like they had yeah crestwood was un uh, unbelievable mm -hmm. back then and we just had younger kids this year obviously we came short but yeah. this was our year to win it all so uh, is grade 13 something that is popular on the girl side as well because you're saying great no really we right? have we have okay. one kid that's that was fifth year mm -hmm. but in the girl side they usually they commit early too yeah. they commit like after grade 11 right. actually and they don't they don't do fifth year okay. um, like that because i i feel like it, it's my opinion but um in the boy side is the physicality is a lot mm -hmm. uh more important right so i think i think when they go after fourth year they're not they're just not ready to play right um and but but when they do fifth year they develop their body they're more ready for it and they go right, right. but in the girl side is more skills it's based. more skill yeah. um it's a lot of ability shooting skill so it, like i think doing fifth year is not prevalent really yeah okay we're well, talking about uh the king's, the king's christian girls team that has been together for a few years you guys are rolling into form, heading into OSBA. We're going to switch gears now and talk about the, the men's side of things. You're mm -hmm. obviously the head coach for New Horizon Academy. First year program. Right. No continuity. This is, no. This is just off the ground lately. Um, uh, OSBA play-in. You guys made it to the OSBA play-in. Right. Um, and just missed out on the final eight. What were... I guess the highlights of this year on the men's side and what were some of the difficulties establishing a, a new program? I mean, obviously, like the, the most difficult thing about starting a new program is you don't have any players. <laughs> you don't have any players. You have to start from zero. Yeah. Uh, so I had to recruit uh, 14, 15 of them. Right. Don't mind me. Um, keep you can keep going. You have to recruit 14 of them. I had to recruit 15 of them. 15 of them. Um, in a short period of time, and that was that was difficult, right? right. And also the fact that the program is new, so it's not, it's not known to, to the public. Yeah. So to bring in good players, better players, is always yeah. a tough uh, situation, right? When you when you are competing with guys like Orangeville, that's been there for, for a while, Royal mm -hmm. Crown, and all these schools that, are, that have the names, mm -hmm. right? So... That was, to me, that was the most difficult part. Um, the most proud of, proud moment that I've had with this team was that um, I think a lot of their personalities got better. Yeah. There were uh, some of the kids that um, that I recruited in September, they would not talk. They would yeah. not joke. They would not, you know, uh, look at you in the eyes. <laughs> You're on tight shit. Yeah. <laughs> and then now it's they're they're joking, yeah. they're having fun, they're they're more upbeat about the game, right. upbeat in the classroom. That's what I'm most proud of, really. So there's a couple of things I want to talk to you about. Um let's start back with the recruiting process, getting mm -hmm. fifteen players onto a roster right. from zero. Um if I'm not mistaken, Tyson was the first to commit. Uh yeah. he was the first one that I went yeah. after. Yeah. Right. And so he's one point. How do you approach a player? without a team <laughs> to, mm -hmm. to show that like the first guy must have been the hard like the hardest right pitch. i mean with tyson it was a bit easier because i've known him um mm -hmm. from before i've known his dad too but um i basically sold him on what i think he should be like yeah. um and i told him I, I basically told him the facts um I'm, he's had some schools that went after him as you know yeah um, but I didn't. I didn't really. Some big programs too. I, I didn't really sell them bullshit. Yeah. At the end of it all, 
I didn't I didn't tell him that he's gonna be the star player. I, I didn't tell him he's gonna play this many minutes, um, do this, do that. I didn't sell him any of that. I told him you have to earn everything, basically, mm-hmm. right? And that's the that's been that's been a, my consistent approach to recruiting mm-hmm. for every player. Right. Every player when they come in, I you no know they, they want things, yeah. right? They want promises and promises always get broken mm-hmm. so I, I i promised them a few th- like two or three things which is i'm gonna be at every practice i'm gonna be on your ass mm-hmm. and third i'm just gonna do what's best for you that's mm-hmm. it um whether you play 40 minutes 20 minutes that's 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 up to you right no coach in the world is not gonna play you if when you're kicking ass in uh practice and right. running at first and running rebounding the hell out of the ball like mm-hmm. shooting at a high percentage no yeah. no no coach is going to be like you know what you're just not going to play right right so everyone that comes into the program has an opportunity to learn mm-hmm. and earn your under earn their spot mm-hmm. um that's basically i mean you talk about tyson but that's basically what i told everybody they came into right. the door and obviously i think who the player that we regard as maybe the top of the class so far would be Augustus. Mm-hmm. He's, uh, I, I don't like calling kids first options, but, you know, he, he was on the top of the score sheet. A right, right. Um, so how is that conversation different than any other? Is it the, the exact same? Like, hey, like, you might have the ball more, but if they're not... You like, you're talking him? before the season? Or yeah. When I'm, when I'm recruiting him? Yes. It's not different. The exact same. Not different at all. Um... You know, he, he was able to become one of the best best uh, players on the team, but I had no idea. Right. I had no idea he was going to be the best one of the best players on the team and scoring, you know, averaging 23 points, 23 points. Mm-hmm. I had no idea. So my my approach to him was the same, exact same. Right. He's got a big name. His brother is obviously the, in, the, in the NBA, but right. I told him basically the same thing. How do you... Um, mm-hmm. Uh, is my mic working? Here we go. Well, uh, okay, but as I'm fixing my mic, I want to ask you about the like realities of being at New Horizon. Mm-hmm. The only students in the school are the basketball players. Right. How has the high? How what do you guys do to try to replicate the high school experience? Is it something you guys think about, or I mean, it, or do you tell them like this? Hey, this is we're gonna do the schooling. And schooling is important, but it's school and basketball. Right. That's it. That's it. Um, and that's where I was honest with myself and, and the parents too, and the players. Mm-hmm. You know, I told them, you know, this is only 15 boys on the senior team and 12 to 13 boys on the junior team. That's it. Yeah. There's that's no the whole girl. school. There's no girls. There's no <laughs> that, That's what I was getting There's to. no dances. <laughs> there's no... You didn't have a new horizon. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Um, I'm, the boys want it, right? Oh, but I, th- I told them all like, there's obviously cons to this, right? Uh, because there's no, there's not a lot of social aspect of it. You see the same guys every time, right? But there's also, I think, one of the pros is that, like, everyone on the team is um, willing to make that sacrifice, right? And they have the same aspiration when it comes to basketball, right? So when they when they do practice with guys that share the same aspiration, mm-hmm. obviously, I think you get better, right? Right, um, but I told I told them straight up. I'm like, even though I wanted them, um, I told them straight up. If you're not mentally ready, if you're not ready to do this on a daily basis, don't come. Mm-hmm. Do not come because yeah. it's not it's not going to be easy. Yeah, you know the schedule that we have is very similar to, you know, um, college basketball yeah. uh, schedule. Um, so I told them I I told them straight up. I'm like this. This is not. It, this might not be for you. Right. Who do you think is having the most problem without having girls on campus? Oh, <laughs> we can name a couple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but it, it is difficult, right? Because it's it's literally just you have school upstairs, work downstairs. Right. There is yeah, school, uh, books and basketball. That's it. Yeah. And um, a part of me likes that a lot. Like, it, I think, um, I think obviously education is important. I'm still in school. Right. <laughs> but, um, I think if, if this is a life that you're choosing, there's no problems with just uh, eliminating the fat of it all. Right. I think, you know, I tell them every time, like, mm-hmm. you signed up for this. Right. No one forced you. Right. You said you want to go to uh, play 
Canadian school and you said you want to play Division One. You said you want to play this and that. So we have to do what's required. Mm -hmm. We can't just not do anything about it and okay, I'm just gonna go play next level. No, it's, it doesn't happen that way. Right. Step one, two, three, four, five have to happen to go to the next level. What are your goals for for next season after having put this basketball at least calendar out of the way for year one? How do you build on it? Uh, do you guys have a vision for next year? Um, for me, it's, it's it's always the same, right? The vision is to get them better, get them better, get them better, mm -hmm. right? Develop them, develop them, develop them. Um, and what comes out of it is uh, what they get, really. Mm -hmm. I guess I can't really, I, I don't want to have a goal where um, I want this result. I right. want to win this amount of games. And I want to send two or three kids to Division One. It doesn't, that's not really up to mm -hmm. me, right? right? Um, all I can do is control what I can control, which mm -hmm. is develop them, be at every practice, study the game. That's, that's all I can do, right? Okay. Now I know it's a boring answer, but... Huh? I know it's a boring answer, but... No, yeah, it's incredibly boring. Um, <laughs> that's why I'm changing the topic now yeah. and talking about something that's not boring, at least to me. I, I want to know your story, um, your background. Where were you born? Where did you grow up? I grew up in Korea. Yeah. Um, I moved here when I was 14, 15. Is there any basketball in your life when you're in Korea? No. I play what, soccer what, and baseball. Oh, baseball. Um, not what a lot of basketball. At? What, what were you better at? Baseball. Soccer? Baseball. baseball they required uh, less running yeah <laughs> <laughs> but um you know i moved here when i was 15. i was mm -hmm. one of those uh, international students that yeah this didn't, didn't speak a uh, lick of english right just hung out with korean people asian people basically yeah. and then um when you say moved here like where are you to in oakville. Uh, oakville okay to oakville to my uh, uncle's house mm -hmm. um just you just me oh wow my parents were home uh, back home. Uh, so they sent just, you here to get like, just sent my ass here. How annoying were you at 14, 13? Very, yeah. very, very. I, was, yeah. I remember I was going to the <laughs> principal's office, getting into fights and, yeah. and trouble, trouble child, right? Actually? Yeah. No, you're watching. No, I'm not. You were a trouble kid. Yeah, that's why they sent me here. Really? Yeah. You know, I would get into you. fights. I would get into like fist fights and. Really? You know, break someone's nose and they would break my nose and, you know. <laughs> Uh, stuff like that, right? So, I guess they thought oh it was it was best for me to go somewhere else. Yeah, kind of kind of a fresh start. I, I want to take a time out just for one second because I I, I still think you're bullshit. Only because oh, no. like, I think you're trying to lay down the law with me oh, because no. I know I get like I purposefully annoy you whenever <laughs> I got an office right next to yours just to be around <laughs> you more. So I feel like you're just setting the blueprint. Like, hey, no. next time you just walk in my office and take a water bottle. Hey, I wish just I know was my history. I no, wish okay. I was kidding. I'm I'm not proud of it. I'm mm. not proud of it. But that's that's why I came here in Canada, right? And to 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 you know learn different culture and different you know just mm. a fresh start basically yeah. um, are you appreciative of the move hmm? do you think it's for the better do you think no you now, now that i think of it yeah for sure yeah i appreciate uh my parents for sending my ass to <laughs> uh, a whole different country where are i they don't here know now? english huh are they no here they're now? not so how often do you go back uh, every two three years oh wow i haven't seen my dad in four years in person when, when are you going back um when this stupid pandemic is, pandemic oh, is over. God. All right, I'll declare it over as soon as we can, huh? Yeah. But... Wait, keep going. What were you talking about? But yeah, about? Um, and I, 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 I came across a lot of um, international students that couldn't speak the language, mm -hmm. even though they've been here for six, seven years. Right. And I'm like, I'm not going to be that. Yeah. I'm not going to be that. I'm, my parents are spending a lot of money. Um, I'm here by myself to learn something. I'm not going to be one of those people. Right. So and I started playing basketball. Um, I think it was, it was a great way to um, interact with other people. Who introduced people. you to basketball? Um, what was the circumstance? Like in high uh, school, we used to have like at recess you can, or at you know, breaks, you can go walk, get lunch somewhere, or they open the gym and let you shoot around. Right. You know what it was? What? Um, you know those uh, high teen movies? That what? you watch, like like the, the, like the team, like um, the movies about high school and uh, oh, okay. uh, like stuff like that. Like so, uh, so I would Hill watch was, those. Yeah, you're watching One Tree Hill. I was I was watch those um, <laughs> back in Korea. 
Oh, okay. And the Coach Carter, the the, the, the main characters and mm-hmm. the most handsome guys, and yeah. those guys that get the, the get the most amount of girls, and yeah. all those guys are either playing basketball, right, or football, right, quarterback. You're not. We didn't have a football team. Yeah. Okay. And so I chose basketball. Yeah, I think you even get a football team. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but you, so you you played basketball as a means to, to fit in and to basically, learn language. Basically, basically, yeah. and then I got I got good at it. Um, but then I I never I never thought about playing at the next level or even trying to play mm-hmm. at the next level because our culture is that if you if you are playing basketball whatever sport um, at the next level that means you're just you're just doing that. Yeah, you don't go to school. You just play basketball, baseball, mm-hmm. soccer. And that's it. You're trying to be a professional athlete. That's in my culture. Right. So um, when I was 15, 16, like I never thought about going to the next level. I played Mm -hmm. basketball in the wintertime, um, soccer in the springtime, baseball in the summertime. Yeah. So I basically played every sport. Right. Took the summer off completely, just played basketball for fun Mm -hmm. and come back and get in shape and play again. Like that's, that was my thinking. Right. Which I regret knowing everything now yeah right but that's how it started and um even at uh, when i went to western university i had opportunities to maybe get in and get on the team and all that stuff but i was like no i'm not gonna play um mm-hmm. and then um what had happened was i was really interested in journalism actually right uh kind of what you're doing yeah um, if you want to call it journalism yes and then <laughs> uh i got a job at Western um, doing stories for the basketball team. Mm -hmm. So I would sit on the sideline, I would sit on the scores table, and I had to watch games and and live, Mm -hmm. and then write stories about it. Right. That's when I was like... So wait, before before you finish that, Right. is English still a problem for you at that point? Or by the time you're at Western, you figured it out, you watched all the movies? By the time, it was like grade 11. So two years past... uh, And you just got it. I just got it, because I was interacting a lot. I was listening. Yeah. I was speaking. I was forced to do it. Right. So then, when you're, it's time for you to write for the school, it was, you, you, it it's not a problem. It at was all, all good. It okay. was all good. So um, when I saw when I saw the two benches mm-hmm. at the games, coaches are yelling. Coaches are doing this, doing that. Like mm-hmm. the competitive juice in me just right. was going. Right? Yeah. Like you wanted to yell at kids because to me, like playing sports, it wasn't about just playing uh, i like I, i'm playing it because i like playing basketball right i only played it because i like to be someone's ass yeah <laughs> basically right so so you, you kept that little part of uh right. green school i just <laughs> wanted to be competitive as well. right right so when i saw that and and i went to i went to uh coach brad campbell who's still the head coach of the yeah, western yeah. team mm-hmm. um i told him this is what i can do i can recruit scout scout other teams watch games and he kind of got me um mm-hmm. got me in right and then from there i was sitting on the bench i was and i got i got really interested in coaching right all right so that's, and what was your first role uh, in coaching it was uh i would i would make scouting reports yeah. for other teams um i would present and uh, and you're still in school during this or no? yes okay. like grade no no like uh first year okay first year through third year that's what I did. And you're just doing scouting reports. Yeah, scouting reports and recruiting and you know, yeah. basically everything that um, Brad needed me to do. Yeah. Right. So I did that, and then I, I really got to got got into coaching, like actually coaching. So I started yeah. coaching rep teams. I started doing this trainings mm-hmm. on the side, like, and then when um, the athletic director at Kings wanted to start uh, an OSBA program for both men's and uh, women's. Mm-hmm. That's um, how I kind of transition transition into it. And then, when does IBSA come into the picture? So IBSA. Uh, and for people that don't know, what what is it first? IBSA basketball is a is a, is a training academy. Mm-hmm. So we just do skill work. It's not a team. Um, we just do uh, basic uh, skill work. Um, right. We have seven, eight different academies in different locations now. Mm-hmm. That's how I met Z. Coach yeah. Z, who's the head coach of the Kings Christian Collegiate. Yeah. He was... Um, Heard so many stories. I can't wait for him to be sitting in the big red chair. Ugh, that's going <laughs> to be tough. That's going to be tough. But uh, that's that's how I started, right? Like, I started coaching at Kings and uh, at IBSA, too, as a trainer. Right. So, 
Okay. So then, um, when did you, so you're, you're assistant coaching at Western, presumably you graduated from yeah. Western. Yeah. Is that when you leave Western or? Yeah, that's when I left Western and to start, uh, an OSB program at mm-hmm. Kings. Yeah. Which and the school that I went to, by the right. way. You went to, wait, sorry, repeat that. I went to Kings. You went to Kings. Yeah. So but when the, you moved to Oakville, you went to King. Yeah. So the oh, athletic okay. director, the yeah. athletic director that uh, that called me mm-hmm. was my coach. Uh, okay. Well, back when I played. Yeah. So, so full circle. A, there's a, yeah. There's so, a about, so you're alumni at Kings Christian. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's I think that's one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to do so well. Mm-hmm. Um, coaching at Kings is because I like, went to that school. Yeah. You know. So. Yeah. Full circles. Um, so you're talking about journalism and how you, you were into journalism. You end up actually diving into journalism in your, yourself. Do you want to talk about that? It was uh, it was a Scandi Sports before a Scandi Sports. Yes, yeah, the real okay. I, I am a knockoff of what was your website called? <laughs> it was called the Sideline. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was a blog, sports blog, right. um, where we had podcasts back like. Well, was way like before eight years ago, yeah. yeah, you're like a Rogan podcast, and um, we had uh, a lot of writers as well. Mm-hmm. Did that right, it was, it was kind of like um, like knockoff version of uh, Grantland. Okay, yeah. So, so, how does that come about? Is that is that a Western thing, or is that high school, or wh- when did when did that happen? No, it was. Uh, I was just arguing with my roommates about mm-hmm. sports, and he was very very passionate about sports as well. And then right. we were like, why don't we just like talk about it? Yeah. And like actually Let get something out of it, yeah. Instead of just arguing ourselves, right? So that's how it kind of started, and it got it got bigger and bigger. And, right. um, but then, my personality is that if I dive into one thing, like I I, I go I go straight ahead. Mm-hmm. I I put all my eggs in one basket. Right. But when I get this interested in that, I move on to something else. Right. Uh, real quick, the 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 camera is going to cut out soon, and I. Don't feel like redoing it so the rest of the podcast is going to be audio only still on youtube okay. but um do you have an itch at all to go back into journalism i do you like i it? do i like it yeah. i like doing media stuff i like doing um uh, i like expressing my own opinions right right so I, I i love it i love how media has developed into mm-hmm. like this Right. right, less writing, less you know, reading. Yeah, more like just talking and communication. Yeah. I, I, I love it. More visual, except my camera's gonna be out in like right. thirty seconds. That's fine. But um, so what, what, what caused you to leave in the first place? Was it overcommitment with uh, the basketball, actual on the ground basketball stuff? Um, I just wanted, well, I just wanted to have a bigger, bigger part. Yeah, right? I just wanted to have a bigger part where I can, um. Like I can, where I can develop and see a different side, and mm-hmm. I think to me, to me, this journey has been a lot of uh, a lot about learning, right? Yeah. Um, it's not always about me doing good, me doing better. Like mm-hmm. I, I, I feel like I can learn mm-hmm. um, a lot of things from a lot of different coaches and a lot yeah. of different people, right? So I, I do try to listen to everyone that I meet. Mm-hmm. Whether I do I do I take, you know, a hundred percent of their advice, not really. Yeah. But I take I try to take the good parts. I think I think in any any person that you meet, you there you can take some good things away. Right. Right. So. And what do you think of like the media culture now, where it's more predicated on what gets clicks? So like mm-hmm. there's you'll see like, a lot of negative stuff. Right. Um, you'll see a lot of just the absolute highest points of the game where you think, oh, these kids are superstars. And then right, you right, watch right. the game, it's like, well, they're all right. But, right. Um, um, I mean, that's, that's that's the thing I hate the most about media, right? Right. Um, and that's how I, that's how, how it got me to be really disinterested in media as well. Mm-hmm. Because it was all about clicks. Right. It was all about getting clicks and getting numbers and all that. And you know we you and I talk about the rankings, for example. That's what I'm trying to get into. Right, yeah. the rankings that people put out, like uh, they're, and they're, when you talk they're, about rankings, you're talking about team rankings, player rankings, player ranking, Every ranking there is. Yeah. Right. Every ranking there is. They talk about 
2020, uh, 2030, 2031, <laughs> like, these well, grade 5s and grade 4s. Exactly. I mean, four, <laughs> grade 4s and grade 5s. I'm like, well, like, you're just doing this because you, you want to get followers. Right. You're doing it for the wrong reason. Right. You're doing it because you want to get followers, you want to get clicks, and you want to get more popularity. Right. Whereas, you know, guys like, you know, a good mutual friend of ours, Wes, mm -hmm. guys like Wes is is not just doing it for the clicks. Yeah. He's doing his work. Yeah. He's, he's, he's everywhere. Um, do I agree with his uh, evaluation on every player? No. But you can't, you have to respect the fact that he's at every game. Mm -hmm. He tries to be at every game and he, he watches more film than anybody. And he doesn't just put out rankings for his Instagram followers. Right. Yeah, what's really cool about Wes too is that he will not do less than three stars. Right. Or three, three leaves. Three leaves. My bad. Okay. I, I said it. Come on. Now. But it's also yeah. by association. Three leaves. Um, which is like really cool, I thought. Because like he won't, in the report, yeah, that's a different story, right? But he'll never publicize anything that's not positive. Even the four stars, I mean, four leaves. Jesus, my bad, Ray. My bad. My bad. Oh. my bad. My bad. Four leaves, three four leaves that he's leaves. doing. Um, it's not. It's not rankings. Yeah. All right. He's, he's just putting out an evaluation. You know, evaluation. Yeah. It's not rankings. It's not what gets clicks and likes. Mm -hmm. So I think. I think a guy like him, because I've, I've met him when um, back in, I think 2018, 2019, when we were doing Fiandu's uh, NBA uh, pre-draft stuff. Yeah. He was at the gym. At, he was at Kings. I met him through there. But since then, like, you see him everywhere. Mm -hmm. He's there. You know I'm trying to brand everywhere, right? Hmm? You're try I'm trying to brand everywhere. That's trying are to be, that, that's like my just do it, you know. Right. Are you? Uh, yeah, I mean, but, I mean, but you're, you're you're making this about yourself. Right? It, it is. It's the Scandi Sports Podcast. Right, I think I would need right, something humble right, like right. Canadian but basketball news or something. I, like that, I, I love the hustle that he yeah. he he puts in, right? Yeah. So no, he he really is everywhere. Um, no better point than like this weekend, for instance. <laughs> like, yeah, of course. He'll do it every, and he's bringing people from all over. NCAA U Sports right. NBA, like he does a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot for the, the community. So shout out to Wes. Um, <laughs> but that's you mentioned Fiondu, and that was another part of your story that I want to get into. Mm -hmm. You move here when you're 14, 15 years old. Right. Um, you do basketball or you play basketball as a means to learn the language. Right. Um, as a means to fit in, and now. Last summer, you're training NBA guys. Right, right. Getting them ready for summer league, getting them ready for all that. Did you anticipate that sort of, like, arc for yourself? How did you build up to that point? Like, no, Did you ever I mean, have a chance to sit back and realize, dude, like, I just took this thing <laughs> that I like and turned it to right, right, right. something uh, that a lot I of think, people don't get to? I think, obviously, it's one of my proudest moments, right, like, mm -hmm. in my career is training high-level guys and... Um, I never really had a chance to sit back and be like, oh, like I've, I've done so many things because mm -hmm. to me, like it's always about next, next, next. Mm -hmm. But also at the same time, I don't treat these NBA guys as NBA guys. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of, a lot of trainers and coaches, when they see NBA players, they don't want to piss them off. Right. They don't want to do anything to uh, make them feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Like uh, they train differently. Yeah. If it's a high school kid, they will go after. Yeah. If it's NBA guys, they they're like oh, you know you do what you want to do. Yeah. Do what you want to do. Let's shoot and shoot. With, do it. The, to me, yeah. that's that's not how I look at it. Mm -hmm. Whether it's Fiondu, whether it's um, one of the kids that I have here, mm -hmm. I should I treat them the same. Mm -hmm. Right. Like if I see something wrong, I have to point it out. Right. So that's why you know when. When I think of my achievements, whatever, uh, over the last few years, I don't really look at it as, oh, like, I've done this. Yeah. Right? Like, because I treat them the same. Right. To me, like, training Fiondu and training some, like, some high school kid is, mm -hmm. I treat it the same. Right? I still think it's incredible that uh, mm -hmm. you, you've gotten to that point with the sport because there's guys that'll work their whole life and not get right the, the opportunity to do that what but, advice would you have no but i think i think that's why those guys come to me right 
because I'm not gonna just bullshit. Right. I'm not gonna just sweet talk them. Right. Right. I'll I'll tell them straight because they got they're they want to learn too. Mm -hmm. Just because they made it to the NBA doesn't mean they know it all. Right. So they want to learn different aspects and different moves about the game as well. So when I think I think they appreciate that about me is that I just tell them mm -hmm. you're doing this wrong, you're doing that wrong. Right. Rather than just being nice and you know um yeah, basically. So where do I want to end off at? Hmm. What do we have what haven't we talked about yet? Talk about everything, I think. I've, Oh, he's checking his watch. He just forgot that he didn't want to do the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, I, I I know what I want to talk about uh, before we wrap up here. Um, this whole Iskandi sports stuff has been very predicated on the player journey. Right. Coaches have an entirely different journey. Mm -hmm. How do you... What would be a position for yourself where you can sit back and be like, this is the perfect situation for myself. This is exactly what I want to do. Like, do you want to work, you know, as an NBA head coach? Do you want to work in the front office? Or like, what what is the pinnacle? I think that's also one of my weaknesses is that I don't I don't really have like an end goal. Mm -hmm. um, I'll keep probably bouncing around mm -hmm. place to place, trying to learn stuff and trying to trying to get new challenges too mm -hmm. so like new horizon for example is, is you know I'm, I'm, I'm first time head coaching a prep team mm -hmm. it's been a really good challenge for me yeah. and it's gonna it's gonna push me as a person and, and as a coach mm -hmm. and i wanna obviously keep going right keep mm -hmm. going and then if i feel like i've done a lot with the program then i'll maybe go somewhere else right. where i can get new challenges but job's not finished yet no no. not at all yeah not at all so um to answer your question i don't really i don't really have a position that i want to get to mm -hmm. i guess is, it'd be something that would be continually challenging you every, right every I, year like I, I try to i try to really live in the moment mm -hmm. and i don't really try to think about what's next for me mm -hmm. when i when i feel like i haven't done anything right right when i when i feel like I've achieved a lot. I've had a lot of success where that's going to lead me to different opportunities. Yeah. Then I'll think about the next, right? The next, what's next for me. But mm -hmm. right now, like I haven't, to me, like I haven't really done anything. Right. So I just want to live in the moment and develop this. Right? Well, program. good thing is I'm right next door. I'll be continually reminding you, right. annoying you. I still don't believe that you were ever a bully or that you have ever been someone else. I have to believe that because I don't want to change the way I act around you. Uh, <laughs> that's when I was 13, 12. Yeah, so. like you're so much stronger now, you know? <laughs> back, that was back then. No, back then. no, but I'm happy to hear your story. I know a lot of people are going to be happy to hear your story after this. And um, I'll, I'll see you around, huh? Yeah, I'll see you I'm around. Right, I'm right I'll here. See you around no, but thank you for taking the time. Uh, that's Coach Ray Kim. New Horizon Academy, King's Christian <laughs> College? Wait, what's it? King's Christian? Collegiate. Collegiate. Yeah. It's like a college, right? Yeah. 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 All right. Oh, you want to see something cool with this little device that we have right here that what? you guys can't see on video because it cut out? These four buttons. Pick pick A, B, or C. Pick A, B, or C. Yeah, pick one. B. No, that's <laughs> <laughs> not. If you would pick Is that A. Is we end it? Oh, oh okay. Fuck. Okay. 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 All right. Thanks That's for watching. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Thanks, Ryan.